All right, so we got two things going on Saturday, right? Okay, three. We're going to enjoy the great weather. That's <laughs> yeah. number one. Number two, it's the first day of meteorological summer. Number three, first day of hurricane yeah. season. Getting into that time yeah. of year. Fortunately, we don't have to deal with hurricanes locally, but those impacts are national news headlines when they impact land. And we're going to the National Centers for Environmental Prediction this week talking about the National Hurricane Center located in Miami, Florida. And NOAA just came out with their uh, hurricane outlook for this year. It's the most aggressive preseason outlook from NOAA ever with 17 to 25 named storms forecast, eight to 13 hurricanes and four to seven major hurricanes, an 85% chance that this hurricane season will be above normal, where the normal for a hurricane season is 14 named storms, seven hurricanes and three major hurricanes. One of the main reasons is the ocean water in the Atlantic is like bath water. It is very warm. The current water temperatures are at the levels normally found in early August with a degree and a half to two degrees above normal across the regions where we see uh, tropical storms develop. Now it's the opposite case in the equatorial Pacific Ocean as La Nina is developing with cooler water upwelling off the coast of South America. And that leads to weaker wind shear in the uh, tropical Atlantic Ocean. Wind shear breaks apart hurricanes because it's the change of wind speed and direction with height. So when there's less wind shear and all that fuel for the hurricanes, the warm ocean waters, that will lead to a very active hurricane season. So the NHC will be very busy this year. There's three main branches to the National Hurricane Center from issuing routine hurricane forecast, marine forecast, as well as developing new, new tools and uh, their storm surge unit. So they're responsible for those marine forecasts all throughout the Eastern Pacific Ocean and parts of the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean. And their responsibility for hurricanes goes across the entire Atlantic Basin, even in the Eastern Pacific as storms form off the coast of Central America and move towards the West could impact Hawaii in some cases. And they have to coordinate with international partners, 28 countries across the Caribbean and Central and South America. So Dan Brown at the NHG will go through the process of tracking these storms from initial development to their more mature phases. Satellite imagery is the bread and butter of uh, uh, our operations. So we're looking at satellite imagery across, uh, you know, the entire Atlantic Ocean, the Eastern Pacific uh, every day. And we're looking for areas of uh, uh, clusters of thunderstorms that could go on to become a tropical storm or hurricane. So we issue a routine, what's called tropical weather outlook. And as those disturbances begin to organize, that's when we open what we call invest on those. And we collect additional information, be able to run model guidance on those systems. So you go from the invest to the tropical depressions, tropical storms, and eventually the hurricanes once they get up to that strength. And then they put out these five-day forecasts, forecasting the track of the hurricane. That cone of uncertainty encompasses two-thirds of the historical error of tracks of hurricanes. It forecasts the center of the storm. So it doesn't include all the impacts because hurricanes can be hundreds of miles wide. And these are the names that those tropical storms and hurricanes will get this year. We'll start with the name Alberto, and these names are dictated by the World Meteorological Organization. But the Saffir Simpson hurricane wind speed scale goes from, once it gets to 74 miles per hour, that's a hurricane, category one up to category five, the most catastrophic damage with that uh, category hurricane over 157 mile per hour winds at the center of the storm right around that eye wall. And the category four hurricanes, the damage scale increases exponentially. So when you double the wind speed of hurricanes, you quadruple the force of the wind and that just leads to an immense amount of damage from winds as well as with that storm surge. So they also have to coordinate with a bunch of uh, Air Force Reserve hurricane hunters as well as NOAA, the Aircraft Operations Center, to fly aircraft into storms that might threaten land with all these different types of missions from investigative missions to radar missions, flying directly into the center of the storms in order to get better information for forecast models because when they're flying into these storms, forecasts are generally 15 to 20 percent better. One of the new products that they're coming out with is storm surge watches and warnings. And Dan Brown will explain more about some of the ways that they're trying to communicate the hazards with hurricanes better. We now issue a lot more probabilistic products. We issue um, products that provide the, what the risk of wind will be, tropical storm, hurricane force. Uh, we also issue a probabilistic information about storm surge. Storm surge is highly sensitive to both the intensity, size, and exactly where it makes landfall. So running hundreds of realizations to try to understand what your risk is is really important 
uh, for emergency managers to make evacuation decisions. So a lot of data goes into the forecast to then make those end decisions if you have to evacuate, if you have to take the necessary precautions of the hurricanes coming to your location. So the track forecasting from the National Hurricane Center has greatly improved. The intensity forecasts have also greatly improved, but that's still a bit of a challenge, especially with rapid intensification. When these storms can go from, let's say, Category 2 to Category 4 overnight, when there's an eyewall replacement cycle or something like that, and that really needs to be able to be pinpointed by forecast models better. But with that track forecasting, the cone of uncertainty has shrunk with increased accuracy. Here's the 2008 cone in blue, and now the current cone is a lot tighter, uh, giving us a more precise forecast of where the hurricane will go. Here's another graph showing us, let's say in 1980, for a 72-hour forecast, the average track error was 360 miles. Now it's only at 75 miles, so much better accuracy of where the hurricanes will go. And that's all attributed to the experts at the National Hurricane Center and all the better observations we have and all the better forecast models that we have to project these storms out into the future. So hurricane season goes from June 1st to November 30th with a peak in early September, but I can bet you that the National Hurricane Center is going uh, to be very busy this oh, year yeah. with all the development that's expected because of those factors that I talked about at the beginning. Fuel for hurricane, you gotta have water, right? Yeah. But it's, it's the, the temperature is scary here yeah. in late May. It's scary, like you mentioned, August temps. Right. It's gonna be a busy year. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right, thanks, Jacob. You're welcome. So